Hello everyone. One of the basic requirement while doing root canal treatment and often neglected by dentist is doing a preendodontic restoration. In this presentation, I will explain about what is a preendodontic restoration and how to do a preendodontic restoration in a clinical scenario. We all know that while doing root canal treatment, the access cavity should have four walls. But in many situations, because of a previous restorative procedure or because of the extent of the decay, one or more of the walls might be lost. If we are doing root canal treatment without rebuilding that lost wall, placement of temporary coronal seal in between the root canal treatment appointments will be leaky and it may lead to failure of the endodontic treatment. Also while doing root canal treatment, blood and the gingival fluids can seep into the access cavity thus contaminating the sterile field which are created by cleaning and shaping. Also if you are trying to apply a rubber dam in this situation, the rubber dam will not be able to isolate the tooth completely. One of the basic requirement while doing root canal treatment is the access cavity have to be filled with a root canal irrigant from the initiation till the end of cleaning and shaping. But if one or more of the walls are missing, the root canal irrigant which is used will not stay inside the access cavity while it will seep from the access cavity through the defect. So your root canal irrigation and chemical disinfection will be incomplete. Let's see a clinical case. This is a maxillary molar with a mesial decay. I managed this case by doing a pre endodontic restoration in a very simple and easy way. At first, caries is excavated and we could notice that there is a pulp exposure. While doing a composite restoration, there may be a pulpal bleeding. In order to avoid that, that area is just temporarily sealed with a composite resin material without etching and bonding. After placing that, the entire cavity is etched and a bonding agent is applied. After that, a composite restoration is done. Now, the tooth can be isolated thoroughly with the help of a rubber dam. After a rubber dam isolation, the access cavity is prepared. Now the access has four walls and there will be no chance for contamination. It can support the temporary restorative material and also the irrigant will be contained within the access. This is a very simple clinical case. But most often, the decay may be too extensive that while doing a caries excavation, the pulp chamber may be exposed. Once the pulp chamber is exposed, pre endodontic restoration with the same technique is not possible. In those situations with extensive decay, how to do a pre endodontic restoration? Let's imagine that this is a tooth where one of the wall is lost while doing caries excavation and the entire pulp chamber is open. One of the prerequisites is the root canal orifices or the pulpal floor should be blocked with a cotton pellet. If we do not do this, the bonding agent which is used for restoring the lost wall will seep inside the pulp chamber and it might pose complication by blocking the root canal orifices. So a cotton pellet must be placed. On top of the cotton pellet, a thin layer of temporary filling material is applied. Once this is done, then the proximal defect can be matrixed and it can be restored with a resin composite material. Alternatively, glassinomer cement can be used, but I prefer the usage of composite resin which will be stronger, it can withstand the force which is applied by the rubber dam clamps. After doing the restoration, the matrix band can be removed, the temporary restorative material and also the cotton pellet can be removed and now we can isolate and we can proceed with the root canal treatment. Now if you are using the root canal irrigant, the irrigant will be contained within the access cavity and there will be no contamination from the blood 
or gingival fluids or saliva and we will be able to do a precise root canal treatment with minimal efforts. But in some clinical situations the decay would be too extensive. After caries excavation, more than one wall will be missing or it will be extending subgingivally and restoring it back to have four walls will be extremely difficult. In such scenarios, even if you are blocking with a cotton pellet and temporary filling material, it will be inadequate. In those situations where there is extensive decay, a canal projection technique is suggested. A simple alternative technique is to use the root canal spreaders. Take two or more root canal spreaders and bend it according to the canal curvature. Make sure that you do not use a nickel titanium spreader but always use a stainless steel spreader. Care should be taken so that the spreaders will be exiting in a position where the orifices can be placed so that there will be no acute curvature will be formed while doing root canal instrumentation. Once the spreaders are used for blocking the root canal orifices, then the buildup can be done with a resin composite material. Once it is done, the spreaders are removed and we can proceed with cleaning and shaping. I wish to conclude with a statement that always make sure that Rubber dam is mandatory while doing root canal treatment and for application of rubber dam, four walls are essential. The success of root canal treatment is determined by many factors, but one of the easiest way to enhance the success rate of root canal treatment is pre-endorondic restoration. I hope this presentation is helpful for each and every one of you. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.